Hey guys, Brad Gilmore here. Want to give a big shout out to our title sponsor, Walker Texas Lawyer. If you or a loved one have been injured in an accident, whether that be a car, truck, motorcycle accident, or some kind of other issue, hit up Walker Texas Lawyer at 713-552-1117 or walkertexaslawyer.com. Oh, Brad, what have you done now? Broadcasting live from Houston, Texas, and around the world, and around the world, TV host, best-selling author, and radio personality, Brad Gilmore, brings you a collection of conversations with stars from movies. Matthew McConaughey. Brad Gilmore. Mark Wahlberg. Hey, how are you? The legendary Mr. Christopher Lloyd. Christopher, how are we doing? I'm doing good. Great introduction. <laughs> television. Jimmy Fallon joins us this morning. Jimmy, how you doing, my friend? Good morning. Thank you so much, Brad, for having me. I appreciate this, bud. Kelly Ripa. Brad, thank you for having me. Comedy. Jay Leno joins us. Jay, how you doing? Hey, Brad, what's going on? Chris Tucker is in the building. Chris Tucker, good morning to you. Hey, Brad, good morning to you. How are you? Gabriel Fluffy Iglesias. Good morning. Music. Lola Monroe. Thank you. Thank you for having me. The legendary frontman of ACDC, Brian Johnson, joins us right now. Brian, how you doing? Good morning, Brad. What lucky to talk to me. Funny lad. Grammy Award winner Maya joins us. How are you? And more. And more. This is, is the, the collection. collection. Now, now your host, host the, the Boat, Brad Gilmore. Gilmore. I'm so excited to be talking to them right now to the authors of a brand new book, Monster Club, Monsters Take Manhattan are joining us right now. Darren Aronofsky and Lance Rubin. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you. Morning. Darren, let's jump right in. I mean, this was a this was a concept. The first one was something that kind of was with you your entire life based on a real club that you had when you were younger with your friend Eric. There's a quote yeah. I think about a lot when it comes to creativity. It's take me away to where I had a kid's innocence because innocence, that's what I've been missing ever since. Did you enjoy <laughs> kind of diving into this and, and, and eroding the trappings of adulthood and allowing your imagination to really run wild? Yeah, it was fun to reconnect with my 10, 11, 12-year-old self, bring back those memories, bring back the smells, bring back the neighborhood. It's all set in Coney Island, which is this magical place uh, in New York City and a magical place for most of the United States. And so it was fun. It was fun to get back into it and think about all of those. Um, I mean, they were huge challenges when we were kids. Uh, they They seem so small now, but they were, they were so overwhelming at the time, uh, and they were fun to explore. And, you know, Lance, coming into this project, let me ask you first, because you weren't a part of the first book, but you come in for book two. Um, how did you become involved in this? Um, well, with the first book, I had helped out just a little bit. Um, Darren and Ari had already written a screenplay um, initially that was going to be Monster Club, and then they decided, okay, we're going to make this into a book. Um, so I'd given them some advice along the way during that process. Uh, but then the second one was starting from scratch. There was no screenplay to act as a roadmap. Um, and then uh, Darren and I were like, you want to come along for the ride uh, to actually co-write this thing? And so I said, yes, absolutely. Um, and then, yeah, it's been it's been a really exciting ride together, figuring out the story from, you know, scratch. Yeah, the, the second book was a, the second book was a much bigger lift because there was no screenplay underneath it. Uh, but it was also incredibly fun because we had set up these characters and we had certain clues about what was going to happen in the second book. And so from those clues, we came up with a whole new story. Well, I was going to ask that, Darren, when you talk about a sequel. I mean, I, re I remember listening to an interview with Robert Zemeckis where he said when he did a sequel, they want you to do the same movie, but again, but a little different. Um, <laughs> did you feel like any of that pressure for a sequel to Monster Club? Like, I want to give them the same kind of feel, but a little different. Well, we knew that we knew the second film had to have monsters, uh, but there were <laughs> <laughs> there were new challenges for uh, for our characters because they were facing high school, they were facing new friends. Eric is forced by his parents to move to Manhattan, and he's separated from his friends. And the question is, will those friendships survive? Now, Lance, you wrote on Instagram when you were talking about this book, you had to help Darren and Ari figure out where the line was too dark for children's literature. <laughs> <laughs> Can you explain yes. what you meant by that? Yes, I, I was being a little playful when I said that. Um, but obviously, if you're familiar with uh, Darren and Ari's work, 
Um, it's not something you directly think like, oh, they should write a kid's book. Um, their work goes to dark places in the best ways. Um, so, you. yeah, yeah. And, and I was a huge admirer of their work uh, before working with them. So it's just been such a, a delightful thing for me to get to actually collaborate with these people I admire so much. And uh, yes, at times, maybe I was like, I don't think we can do that for a book <laughs> for eight to 12 year olds. Uh, but but for the most part, we were, uh, you know, on the ride together, was just right. having a good time using our imaginations and, you know, yeah, making a great book. I know this characterized as as a children's book or young adult, middle school age around. But I mean, I see a movie in this. I can see why it was a screenplay first, because it feels like uh, kind of Goonies vibes, because that's my my vibe was a very, very Goonies vibe about it. Are you still hopeful that perhaps with the success of these books, we can maybe make an, a, a film or a television adaptation? You said it, not me. <laughs> In the back of my head, there was that uh, that, that possibility. Um, I still love the story. I love the characters. It'd be really fun to bring these little monsters to life. I think kids would love it. Uh, so, you know, maybe maybe there's a studio head listening right now. Yeah, look, we just read the first book to my six-year-old, and he was like, this should be a movie. Oh, that's so, right. you know, it's, it's a, it should happen. It should happen. <laughs> Well, it has that, it has a feel to it. It has a cinema feel when you're reading through the pages. And, and Lance, again, coming in, like you said, you're able to advise in the first one, coming into yeah. this next one and already having that world established. Was that more of a comfort for you that you knew, okay, here are kind of the parameters that we're working in? Or was it more difficult to say, okay, I feel like maybe I can't have all these ideas that I wanted to maybe create a world with. I need to operate within what's already been established. No, I, I really love the parameters of entering a world because, you know, apart from this, I'm writing books on my own and, you know, there's joy in that. But the joy for me in this process was getting to collaborate with people. So it was a beautiful thing to be like, OK, these are the constrictions. Here's the challenge. Let's go and create within that, um, you know, like uh, like going on Iron Chef or something and being like, here's the ingredients. Uh, now go. Um, it, it was very joyful in that way. Um, and yeah, I, I had a blast. Never felt never felt like constrictions. It was just like, here's the rules of the game. Let's play. And, and, and Darren, when you talk about it being a screenplay first, I would imagine that writing a book is, is sometimes a, I know it's its own challenge. Marshall McLuhan sure. said the medium's the message, right? But at the same time, like I'm thinking when reading through it, you don't have to show what the character is thinking. You can literally write Hey, he's yeah. thinking, Eric's thinking this, or he thinks of this. Does that make it more, does it make it easier to, to kind of tell that story? I mean, ultimately it probably is easier, but I didn't have that muscle to know that we can at any point have a character think something, but Lance would constantly remind Ari and me, oh, well, let's just have Eric think that. And we'd be like, oh, okay, solved. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you stumbled right on the difference between the mediums. And it was exciting because you can get, uh, you can make things much more detailed and rich because of the inner monologue. Um, the book again, Monster Club, Monsters Take Manhattan. But Darren, I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you that The Wrestler is one of the most incredible movies I've ever yeah. seen. The most Thank accurate you. depiction of pro wrestling as somebody who's worked in it for a decade. Everybody within the industry loves that film. Thank and they you. hold it near and dear. So, I mean, reflecting on that, what what are your thoughts on The Wrestler these years later? Uh, you know, it's great. I, it definitely touched a lot of people. It continues to touch people. I'm glad that people are still thinking about it. It was it was a lot of fun to make. There was a lot of heart put into it. Uh, we had very, very little resources when we made it. And the fact that it's a, that people are still talking about all these years later, it's way beyond any gifts we could have uh, received from an audience. Well, thank you for making it. And thank you for helping bring this to life. Monster Club, Monsters Take thank Manhattan, you. the sequel. Darren Lance, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you, Brad. Thanks, Brad.
Have a good one, guys. Thanks so much. That was a great. You were great, too. Brad. Yeah, you were on it. You were awesome. on it. Thank you very much. much. Really regretted so to you. I really appreciate it. Hopefully we get to talk again. I would love it.